hello and welcome to Tradeflow Television. Bringing you valuable analysis and actionable intelligence through the global commodity markets. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. Saudi Arabia, the world's biggest oil exporter, beat Russia to keep its ranking as China's top crude supplier in 2020, Chinese government data showed on Wednesday. Oil demand in China, the world's top oil importer, remained strong last year even as the coronavirus crisis hammered global appetite. Chinese imports rose 7.3% to a record of 542.4 million tons or 10.85 million barrels per day BPD. Full story. Saudi shipments to China in 2020 were rose 1.9% from a year earlier to 84.92 million tons, or about 1.69 million barrels of oil per day, data from the General Administration of Chinese Customs showed. OPEC's Secretary General said on Tuesday he was cautiously optimistic the oil market would recover this year from the slump in demand brought on by the coronavirus pandemic. Monthly meetings of the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries and Allies led by Russia, a group known as OPEC Plus are there to stop an imbalance from re-emerging, OPEC's Mohamed Barkindo told a virtual forum. We all agree that the recovery is fragile, there are still more uncertainties, but we are cautiously optimistic that the recovery will materialize this year, Barkindo said at the Atlantic Council Global Energy Forum. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. The United States on Tuesday sanctioned a network of oil trading firms, individuals and vessels that have helped Venezuelan state-run oil company PDVSA sell crude mainly to Asia despite Washington's sanctions on the South American nation. The measure targets a network that the U.S. Treasury Department says helped the administration of President Nicolas Maduro, whose 2018 re-election Washington called a sham, broker the sale of hundreds of millions of dollars in Venezuelan oil. Those facilitating the illegitimate Maduro regime's attempts to circumvent United States sanctions contribute to the corruption that consumes Venezuela, Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin said in a news release. China's exports of clean marine fuels rose in December to a record since shipments began a year ago, taking 2020 exports of the ship fuel to 15.45 million tons, customs data showed on Wednesday. Chinese oil refineries began exporting very low sulfur fuel oil in January to comply with emission rules set by the International Maritime Organization, after Beijing granted tax incentives to boost production and help create a regional bunkering hub. In December, exports of VLSFO, with a maximum sulfur content of 0.5%, were 2.47 million tons, data from the General Administration of Customs showed, nearly double the volume in November. Moving on to metal price moves. Indonesia remained China's second biggest nickel ore supplier in 2020, Chinese customs data showed on Wednesday, despite the Southeast Asian country's ban on exports of the material. Arrivals of Indonesian nickel ore into China totaled 3.4 million tons last year, the General Administration of Customs reported. That was down 85.8% from 2019 but still second only to the Philippines at 31.98 million tons, and ahead of New Caledonia in third. Indonesian shipments were 1.98 million tons in January and February combined, likely the last cargoes to depart Indonesia before the ban came into force on January 1, 2020, although some may have been delayed by coronavirus curbs. China's imports of copper concentrate from Australia dried up completely in December, customs data showed on Wednesday, with monthly arrivals at zero for the first time in over 16 years as smelters shun Australian supply amid tense bilateral relations. Imports of copper ores and concentrates from Australia were zero tonnes last month, according to General Administration of Customs data. That compares to 26,717 tonnes imported in November and 110,930 tonnes in December 2019. It marks the first time China's copper concentrate imports from Australia have been at zero since April 2004, according to records kept by the International Copper Study Group. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. Malaysia has filed a complaint against the European Union over its palm oil measures at the World Trade Organization, the WTO website showed on Tuesday. 
the complaint concerns measures by the EU and its member states France and Lithuania. This is the second dispute complaint targeting the EU's palm oil-related measures following a similar request by Indonesia in December 2019. That is all for today's news on the commodity market. Stay tuned to Trade Flow TV as we continue to provide you with more updates. You can also follow us on Twitter at TradeFlowTV1 which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop.